Springfield Police, you're under arrest. Tell them you're dropping the charges. No, I won't. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer. Yes, Holly. Yes, you know. Poor that... Roger. Oh, Roger. Poor Roger. You know, he he no. tried to make amends. He tried to. Oh, get Holly out did. of here. But, you know, this was very brave of Holly because she had no role models for this kind of thing. Uh, no one, this is the first time they dealt with marital rape on the soaps. Anywhere, and and, and th this was not part of the, 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 the media buzz of fighting against, standing up against rape and all this. So she really had to, you know, pull herself up by her bootstraps and fight back. And she did it. Yes, Poor little. Did. She'd never been out of Springfield, would she know? Yes, Holly. I'm proud of you. <laughs> All those extremes. I think we just always were in one extreme, or you know, this love and this hate, and uh, so there was a whole spectrum of emotion that we were always playing. You know, I, I think, in a, in a sense, that uh, at least speaking from Roger, that that Holly was that part of himself. He recognized it was in there somewhere that he was had spent his lifetime burying. That you were my heart. Yeah, and Holly has always known that. You are her mate. That's what's kept her in Springfield all this time. In the course of the trial, when it looked like Roger was going to get away with a rape, he was being masterfully defended by Ross at the time. Uh, a true snake. Uh, yes. <laughs> My mother is still not forgiven him, you know. Really? <laughs> really. And uh, she was afraid that Roger was going to take Christina away from her. That, that, was, a, those were, that was a true threat again. Uh, Holly was forced to take desperate measures. What are you doing? What the hell are you doing? Still Ed, huh? Still protecting Ed? You're in love with him, aren't you? You love him, don't you? You love him! Don't you ever look at me that way! You love him! You love him! You love him! You love him! I like the way I kept my eye open like that. <laughs> but did I deserve to be shot down in cold blood like that? I ask the viewers. Violence begets violence. But Holly was not in her right mind, you notice. She was re flashing back to the rape. That's right. This is a brutalized young innocent. That's right. But three bullets were not enough to stop Roger. He enlisted the help of Alan Spaulding to fake his death certificate and get him out of the country. Meanwhile, Holly went to jail. Poor Holly. Women behind bar scenes, though, and it was the longest that any character, a female character, had been in jail at the time. I must throw that in. <laughs> I didn't it was fun. <laughs> now, Ed and his new wife, Rita, got custody of Chrissy, and Roger's obsession to be with his daughter intensified. We had to get in touch with you right away. What's wrong? We've got proof that Roger probably knows exactly where you and Christina are, okay? Now, I want you to stay in your room and don't let anyone in that you don't know until Mike and I can get down there. Who is it? Hello. Buenos dias, senora Thorpe. Oh, good. Got to give up on you. Uh, we'll have breakfast out on the balcony. Yes. Our Santa Dominion breakfast has arrived. <sighs> yeah. Did you miss it?
this, I'll kill you for this! That's gotta be their footprints. Got a call asking if uh, I'd be interested in replacing Alan Spaulding because our wonderful actor Chris Bernot was sick and had to leave the show. And he was the nemesis of Roger Thorpe. And I thought, you know, that just, uh, that the, I didn't feel the viewers could possibly accept that, you know, uh, they were not interchangeable parts. Uh, and, but I did say, wanting to return, that uh, I had always thought fondly of poor old dead Roger and they wanted to exhume him, that would be just fine with me. And I heard he was coming back, so <laughs> I got interested real quick. And plus, they had a character on the show, Blake, that they wanted to integrate more fully into the storyline. Best way to do that is make her related to somebody. And then with us coming back, She voila. was Roger and Holly's daughter, Christina. And she was Chrissy, uh, also known as Blake. <laughs> Listen, just go. Go. You heard it. Look at him. Go look at him. Look at him. You can't be, Holly. Look no. At him. Look no. at him. Fletcher, get her out of here. No. Come on, Holly, come on. No. Come on. No. no. This is not like you, Holly. No. This is not what you want. Come what on, are you please. doing? Is Holly. this what you want no, me for? Honey, come on. No. You wanted me before. Well, here I am. Right. Come on, take what you want. What's no, this is not you? what you want. You love somebody else. Now, I've come never on. stopped you before. Come on, take what you want. Holly, I'm here. Holly, come, on. come on. What have I done to you? Come on. What have I done to you to make you so twisted up inside? How dare you? How dare you? You, how dare you? You have no right. You have no right. Okay, okay, How okay. dare you? All right, all right. You have no right. Okay, okay. You can't talk about me. You don't know me. You're the woman. You're the okay. animal. Okay. You're so twisted up inside. Right. You did it to me. Shh, okay. Okay, okay. I have to. I have to. Okay, okay, okay. Shh. Why don't you just do it and get it over with? Oh. It's all over now. It's already uh, over. Uh, I hurt you so bad. You raised me. I know. And I have thought about it so much, it's burnt a hole in my brain.
I didn't know how to love. All I knew how to do is try to control, and I would control you, and somehow I would make you love me. And when I was sure that you really loved Ed, I just totally lost control, and I regretted it every day of my life and every moment since because I destroyed the only woman that I could ever love. And now, I seem to have this opportunity to make some small amends, and I never thought I'd have that chance. I don't know what dark force is moving you to be with me tonight, but I know that I'm responsible for it. And I know that I will never, ever hurt you like that again. You don't want to make love to me, Harley. You don't. And I can't believe it, but I can't make love to you. In some way, I don't even begin to understand. I would be forcing you against your will again, and I will never, oh God, I will never, ever, ever hurt you like that again. I remember what Roger did to me. I have remembered it and hated him for it so much for the past 20 years. It's nearly destroyed me. Hating Roger was my job, don't you remember? I wore it like a badge. I showed it to everybody who got close to me. To my daughter, to, to my friends, to anybody who tried to love me, including Roger. And he does love me, no matter how you try to devalue it. So, after 20 years, I took off that miserable badge and I forgave him. I wasn't planning to be with him. I just wanted to get on with my life. And then this winter, I find him with a bullet in his chest, practically dead and no one to turn to. Now, he had been assaulted by this entire town, all the good citizens of Springfield. They were celebrating his being shot like it was New Year's Eve. And I saw him like a victim now. And I realized that I have feelings for him. You know, that had been buried under all that hate. I wanted to be exactly like you. I think I spent most of my life trying. After all these years, I still don't know what I want. And you do. You know who you want, and you have gone after it single-mindedly. I can't tell you how I envy that. thing despite what you may think and despite what I have said to you out of anger and bitterness I've always loved you honey and beyond that I admire you now for your strength and for your tenacity I think you've got guts Quite a shock, I know. Just wish I'd found some way to cushion the blow. My father is dead. There's no way to cushion that. Is that him? He wanted his ashes scattered from the highest point in Springfield to rain down upon the town that loathed him. Now that's Roger. I loved him very much. You came into his life at the very end? It was almost too late before I discovered the truth. What truth? Roger Thorpe was my father. You are Roger Thorpe's son? Yeah. This is insane. Why? Because you come here with his ashes and now and you're... And now you tell me that you're my brother? 
Shouldn't you have mentioned that, that at the beginning? I didn't know how. I didn't... I, I didn't even know if I was going to tell you at all. <sighs> I'm sorry, Sebastian, for being so harsh. You have to understand, your father was... I know, I know, it just... <sighs> I know it doesn't make much sense. You may remember him with all these golden memories, but I knew him when he was a failure as a man, as a father, as a human being. Yes, but he shared everything with me. Everything. Who he loved, what he hated, who he had been. And yes, I, I, I loved him for the man that he was before he died. He was a, a great man, a caring man. I loved him for that. And my only hope, my hope, was that I could come here and I could share that with you. <laughs> do you remember us? Yes, I do. Uh, Roger found it in the little shop window in Paris in Montmartre, and he just had to have it. Here. He wanted me to give it to you. You know, I think you're right. Uh, what you said about it being so easy for me to focus on the monstrous aspect of Roger and not the good. It's just easier that way. You miss him? The Roger of the music box and the poetry and the grand gesture. Yes, I do. So you're not sorry you came? No, I'm relieved, and grateful, and uh, sad for what was lost. I think he would love you even more for that. Pleasant surprise. It's good. What are you doing here? Came to see you. Come on in. Can't. No time. I'm leaving. Where are you going? Round the world tour, open ended. With you? Life is very short, Holly. Come on, please say yes. How long? How long do I have to pack? Ten minutes. Fifteen. I'll be here, waiting to carry your bag. 